Hi, and welcome to your tutorial on how to register in SAM.gov. I am so happy you've gotten to this last stage. You've done the work. You got your mindset right. You got your LLC or your business started. And now it's just time to register. So I'm going to take you step by step on how to register your company in SAM.gov. Now, remember, registration is in two parts. One part, if you're a new LLC, you may have to input yourself, your LLC and your business into the system, and Sam will have to input it manually, which may take longer than it would if your company shows up doing verification, and you can just go straight through. So there may be two parts to this video, okay? But moving forward, we're going to go ahead and do it because guess what? No excuses. That's my model for next year, 2023, no excuses. So let's get started. All right, guys. So if you don't have a account with Sam.gov, we got to register you in your account first. So that's where we're going to go. So you're going to go to Sam.gov. Now make sure you're on the right website because there are a lot of websites out there who purport to be Sam.gov and it's not. So if the website doesn't look like this, you're not on the right website, okay? All right, so we're gonna go to over here, get started. You're gonna click on get started. And basically what this page is, it just shows you exactly what's gonna happen. You're gonna register your unique identity ID. You're gonna set up your account, prepare your data, and you're gonna register your business. So you can go ahead and read this at your leisure if you want, pause the video, read it, and then come on back and let's continue. Okay, so next thing you need to do is you need to click on get started because we are going to be giving you a Sam.gov account. You're going to go to create, a, create, a, create an account, okay? And then you're going to input the email address you want your SAM.gov account to be. Now, this is not the account contact officers will be contacting you on. This is the account for you and SAM only. So if something happens with your account, something needs to be updated, um, you expire, they will send this email the message. Now, if you have a business email, go ahead and put that email. That way everything stays in one. But if you don't have a business email, just put your regular personal email, okay? Make sure you choose the language that you want to receive email communication in. And then make sure you click on I've read and accept the login.gov rules. Click submit. Now, they're going to send an email to the email address you just put into SAM.gov. So let's head over to that email. As you can see, we have an email from login.gov. You're going to click on it. And now you're going to confirm your email. You can either click the link. You can either click the confirm email address or the link below. Congratulations. You just created a SAM.gov login account. Now we're gonna continue the account by entering the necessary information to secure your account. They would like you to create a password, so you're gonna create a password. They continue. And then you're going to bring, it's going to bring you to the authentication method. Now, what I recommend, as I tell everybody, the text and voice message. So what will happen is whenever you log in, they'll send you a message to sam.gov on your phone where you have to put in the code to get logged in. Why is there so much security? I don't know. We just follow the rules. Now, if you have any other, any other of these backup methods, feel free to use them. I don't use them. So this video is not gonna be on those methods. Click text and voice message and click continue. Now it's going to send you an email. You're gonna enter your phone number. And then hit text or phone call. I recommend text. And then you're gonna click on send code. The code's going to pop up. 
and then you're going to hit submit. Your phone was just added to the account and you've just added your first authentication method. It's going to ask you if you want to add a second backup method. We don't need a second backup method. You can click no, skip for now. Or if you want to add a second backup method, you can go ahead and add that. But we're not going to do that. So we're going to skip for now and continue on to sam.gov. Click agree and continue. Now we're going to complete our profile. You can read this. This is basically telling you the terms of service. Once you read that, click I agree to the SAM.gov user access terms and all login.gov terms or service as condition of the accessing SAM.gov and click on next. Now you're going to put in all your information. Your email address should already be in here. And then the business phone is optional. You do not have to submit it if you don't want to. It's going to ask you to request the role. Now, this portion we don't usually use because most of us are a single member LLC. But if you have other members in your LLC, say your partnership, and they are certain roles that you want them to have within SAM.gov, whether it's just solicitation finding or being able to submit a proposal or anything like that, this is where you would do it. But for now, we're going to use a single member LLC and we're not going to request the role because it's just our company. So you're going to click skip and finish. And congratulations, you have just created a SAM.gov login account. Step one down, two to go. Before we move on to the next section, I need you guys to pause this video, get the following documents that you see on your screen and have them ready just in case you will need it to identify your identity. Now you're going to go down to your workspace page. This page is where you're going to register your business. If you needed to update your business, this is where you would do it. So you're going to click on get started and we're going to go ahead and register your business in SAM.gov. Now it's going to ask you, what do you want to do? You are going to register for all awards. You don't need to register for any financial assistance. And we're not only getting a unique entity ID. You're going to register for all awards. So click on the second option and then click next. Then it's going to ask you, are you registering a government entity? The answer is no, you are not a government entity. You are a regular business. A government entity would be like Department of Homeland Security, DOD, something like that. You are not that, so go ahead and click no and click next. Then the next two pages is basically a summarization of what's gonna happen. It's letting you know that you're registering your organization for all awards. You can just go ahead and skip these two pages. Once again, the second page showing you what you're going to be doing, um, the process that you're going to be going through for your company information. Just go ahead and click next. Now you're going to enter in your company's information. You're going to put in your legal business name. Please make sure that it is exactly like how SAM.gov put it into the system if you had to put it into the system or that it is exactly like how it is on your articles of organization. Then if you have a DBA, you're going to put in your DBA information. A DBA basically is a fictitious business name. So if you have one of those, you can go ahead and put that in there. You're going to click on the United States. Make sure you put in the country and the address that your business is located under. Make sure the address is exactly the business that it is located under. Otherwise, you may run into some problems. Make sure to put the zip code, which will then populate the state. And make sure to put the correct city if it does not already pop up. Now you're going to get ready to validate your entity. Okay, this is the information that I asked you to have in the beginning. 
Make sure you have your legal business documents, your articles of organization, your EIN number, and anything else that you may need to validate your entity. This information may be needed if they cannot find you in the system. So what's going to happen is SAM.gov is going to actually look into the system to see if they find your information. If they do, it'll pull up. If not, you'll have to enter that information that we just provided into the document so that they can put you in manually. Once you have all these documents and you've gathered everything, go ahead and click I can provide official documentation if necessary to validate my entity and click on next. So right now, what they're doing is searching the database for your entity. It may pull up. It may not. If it does not pull up, then you will have to upload those documents that we had talked about earlier. So if, if a list pulls up and you do not see your business, you're going to select I do not recognize my entity. If you do see your business, then you're going to select I recognize my entity and you're going to click on next. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to click on I do not recognize my entity and then we're going to click on next. Then you're going to upload your information. You're going to put in the start year of your company and then you're going to put in the state that it was formed in. and click on next. It's going to ask you to confirm the information. Just make sure that everything looks correct because this is very important. Confirm that the information is correct and then you're going to select next. If you need a list of acceptable documents, you can click on this button here and it will show you a list of acceptable documents. Now is where you're going to upload the documents that we talked about earlier. You're going to click add a document and then you're going to upload as many documents as you possibly can to allow them to be able to check your company out into the system. The more documents you have, the better chance and faster chance you are more likely to get approved and put into the system. Make sure that when you're adding your documents, you're selecting the document type and then you're clicking on each one of those buttons to approve that document. And you're going to click the submit button. Then you're going to upload as many documents as you need to to be able to have them identify your company. So if this is the only document that you have, you can go ahead and provide details at the bottom, or if you need to add additional documents, you can do that now. I'm going to add additional documents so that they can have the most documents that I need for them to have to be able to put my business into the system. Once you finish uploading all the documents that you're going to add, you're going to put in the box below just to explain why you're uploading documents. But what I put was, he was not found in database. I have uploaded documents to prove my entity belongs to me. Now you're going to get a ticket number. This is where you're going to stop. But first thing in the morning, you're going to call SAM.gov and give them this reference number so that they can check your system. You're going to call them every day or every other day to check the status of your application or check the status of them inputting your information into the system. Do not wait for them. I repeat, do not wait for them to contact you. Contact them first and foremost to get an update, okay? At this point, this is all that you can do. You're gonna head back to your workspace Call them first thing in the morning, or if it's morning time now, you can call them right now, ask them for an update, and come back when you get your email stating that your information has been put into the system. When you go back to your workspace page, you should see your entity in the draft registration. This is where your entity will sit until you get your email stating that you are now ready to continue on registration. Come back and see me when you're ready. Hey guys, 
guys, welcome back. Congratulations. Your entity is now in Sam.gov and you are ready to register your business. So I'm going to show you the email that you should have gotten from Sam.gov, giving you instructions on what to do next. And then we're going to take you through the registration process and get you registered. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, let's get started. Okay. So this is the email that you will get once you're in the system. Okay, it will say, hello, we didn't find your entity, but we've created a new record based on the documents you sent us. Um, you need to take any action, your registration, unique identity ID. They will give you the details and your next following steps. Okay, make sure you follow these. Okay, don't just listen to me, but make sure you actually are following them <laughs> um, so you can know what is going on, all right? All right, so now that we have this email, you're good to go to sam.gov. So let's go to sam.gov. And sign in. All right, guys, so now that you're logged in, um, we're going to go to the pending ID assignment. I'm going to click on it. At the top, or, the top up right-hand corner, there is a... Um, button that says get started we're going to click on that and then we're going to continue our registration you're going to register for all awards okay click next it's asking are you a registering a government entity you are not a government entity you are a regular business so you're going to click on no then it will give you the next two things that you're going to be doing so you're going to click on next and next you can skip those two pages and then you're going to put in your legal entity information now remember make sure you're putting the legal entity information exactly how sam.gov had it if you need to refer to this email please go ahead and do so so go ahead and put in your information i'm going to copy and paste country please make sure do not put do not forget to put the country your zip code and the city. All righty. Then you're going to click on next. It's going to ask us, we're going to validate our entity. You're going to click, I can provide the documentation. Click on next. And voila, there you have it. Your entity should be the first entity popped up. Congratulations, your entity has popped up. Okay, so now if you still don't recognize your entity, go ahead and click I don't recognize it and you're gonna have to go through the same process over again. But that shouldn't happen because we got an email specifically stating that our entity was in the system, okay? So go ahead and click I recognize my entity. You're gonna click on the entity that you recognize, okay? And you're going to click on next. You're going to make sure that all the details are correct, which they are. Click yes, and then click next. You're going to put in your start year and the state that you were incorporated in, which was, okay. Then you're going to click on next. And you're going to request your a unique entity ID, okay? This button will already be checked. Don't uncheck it. Just leave it as, as it is. You're going to click I certify. I am authorized to conduct transactions on this be, behalf, ent entity's behalf. And you're going to click receive entity ID. Congratulations. You just got your unique entity ID. Woohoo! One step down. Two more to go. All right, guys. So at this point, make sure you write this number down because you will need it. Okay. Write the number down. Once you write it down, it's time to register your entity. So go ahead and click. Do not click go to workspace, but click continue registration. All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. All right, so this first page is the core data. It's just basically a summary page of the different um, steps that you're going to be going through. So you can go ahead, click continue, and now we're going to start answering the questions. Now, remember, guys, 
you need to answer the questions according to your business, okay? According to your business. Now, my rule of thumb is if you don't know the answer, put no. You can always come back and change the answer. The purpose of this registration is to just complete the registration. Just get through it where you can complete the registration, okay? So let's get started. All right, so the first question is going to be enter your start date. This is the day that your company was formed, okay? So enter that in the month, day, and year. So your fiscal year in will be the date that your year ends, okay? And it's in month and day. So if you're quarterly, whatever the month and day of the end of your quarter fiscal year is, and if you're yearly, whatever the month and day of the end of your yearly. So of course, most of us are yearly, so we're gonna put 12, 31, okay? Entity division name, you don't have to worry about. Entity division number, you don't have to worry about. Entity URL, you don't have to worry about, okay? Now it's gonna ask you to create an MPIN. This is important. This MPIN you will use to update your um, registration anytime you have to do it, okay? So you're going to pick a, uh, let's see, the MPIN it has to be nine characters long and contain at least one letter, one number, and no spaces or special characters. Go ahead and think of a number for your MPIN and enter it in. in. Okay, now once you put in this M pen, please write it down because if you forget and you put it in incorrectly, you're going to have to repeat and create another one. Just go ahead and write it down. If you have your contract organizer, which all of you should have, there is a section in the back of the contract organizer, okay, where you can put your M pen. All right, so you can put it right in there, all right? So go ahead and put your M pin. All your physical address should be um, should be inputted. Your mailing address, you're going to copy the physical address unless it is a different mailing address. Because remember, everything is based on your business, okay? And then at the bottom where it says tax identification number, you're going to select 10 type as EIN, and then you're gonna put your EIN information. Then you're gonna click save and continue. Now you're going to the IRS consent form, okay? You're gonna put in your taxpayer information. Now remember, this is based on your business information, okay? So the taxpayer name is your company's name. Okay, the name that the taxes will be in, which is your company. So go ahead and put your company's name. Then you're going to put in your address. Now, if you would like to copy your address from the previous page, you can go ahead and click copy address and it'll show up. Okay, so your most recent tax year will be 2022. Okay, it's 2023. You haven't made any money. If you formed your business last year, your most recent tax year will be 2022. If you just formed your business this year, then your most recent tax year will be 2023, okay? Name of individual executing consent, which will be your name. And the title of the individual executing consent, you're going to put whatever your title is, owner, CEO, whatever you want your title to be, okay? Once you input that information, you're going to click save and continue. Now, it's going to send you a passcode to your email, an OTP passcode, okay? So go ahead and click send password, check your email, that password will have to go into this form. All right, 
So now you're getting to the cage code. Now remember guys, I always say you don't apply to a cage code, you're assigned to a cage code. This is where you're assigned your cage code. So if you do not have a cage code, put no. If you do have a cage code, you have to put yes and you will have to put the cage code into the box where it is indicated, okay? If you're starting a brand new business, each brand new business has a separate cage code. So what I was told was to put no that you don't have a cage code so that they can assign you a brand new one. Each business must have their own um, cage code. So you're gonna click on no. Now, when you click on no, guys, that's it. That's how you get your cage code. You just click on no and you wait for it to come, okay? Please, please know that there's nothing else you can do once you uh, click no and submit your registration. Your cage code will come when your registration becomes active, okay? Because you guys keep asking, how do I check on my cage code? This is how you do your cage code. Click no and move on, all right? Okay. Ownership details. Now it's going to ask, does your entity own or control any entity you are registering? So what basically what that means is, is this company owned or controlled by any other entity? So for example, if you were a sister company to another company, right? And that company controlled this, or if you were a second division of another company, then the answer would be yes. But more than likely, the answer is going to be no because it's your own business you're registering. So go ahead and click no and continue. Then it's going to ask you, are you the successor to the predecessor that held a federal contract or a grant within the last three years? So basically, that means did anybody in this business hold a grant or a contract within the last three years that you are now in charge of because you now own their business? More than likely, the answer is going to be no, because I know most of you guys just started this business and you don't have any federal contracts or grants. So you're going to click no and save and continue. Now you're going to put in your entity's information. So once again, this information is based on your entity, okay? If you don't know the answer, put no, because guess what? You can always come back and change it later. If you need help, call sam.gov. They are there all the time. Excellent customer service to help you go through these questions, okay? So when in doubt, call Sam or put no, come back and change it later when you figure out what the question was asking you, okay? So go ahead and enter your inter information. The country of incorporation, you're going to put, of course, the U.S. State of incorporation, which is where your company was founded. You don't have to put anything for the entity security level, and you don't have to put anything for the highest employee security level. You can skip those two questions. Your entity is... If it's one of these items, go ahead, select it. If it's not, put not applicable, okay? You have community development, domestic uh, shelter, educational institution, foundation hospital, veterinary hospital, okay? Disadvantaged enterprise. Is your entity certified, keyword, by a state certifying agency as a department of transportation disadvantaged business enterprise? Only if you had to go through some type of certification would this apply to you, okay? More than likely, you have not, so the answer is going to be no. Native American entity. Is your organization, is your organization, ooh, they got that wrong. Look, is your organization is a federal, ooh, I found a mistake on Sam.gov. <laughs> okay, is your organization a federally recognized Native American entity? If it is, go ahead and select which ones it is. If it's not, you don't have to answer that question. Organization factors. Do one or more of these organization factors apply to your entity? If none of these apply, select not applicable, okay? So once again, if they do not apply, select not applicable. 
It says, no, if you are a manufacturer or if you are a manufacturer of goods, you may also make one other selection. First, select manufacturer or goods, then another drop down box will display for your next selection. OK, so the question is, does one or more organization factors apply to your entity? You're going to select it. Are you a foreign owned, small agricultural, limited liability company? Subchapter S, manufacturer goods. Most of you guys are limited liability company, so that's the one you're going to select. Then it's asking you to entity structure. What is the form of your entity as defined by the IRS? Next question, entity structure. What is the form of the entity as defined by the IRS? Okay, you have corporate entity, not tax exempt, which means you're an entity, a corporate entity, and you pay taxes because you're not tax exempt. A corporate entity tax exempt, which means you're a corporate entity that does not have to pay tax exempt, I mean taxes, because you are exempt from taxes. Are you a partnership or limited liability partnership? Not a limited liability company, but a limited liability partnership. Are you a sole proprietorship or other? I can't answer this question for you. You only know what you are according to the IRS. So majority of you probably will be a sole proprietorship. Now you are LLC, which is a limited liability company, but if you're a single member LLC for IRS tax purposes, you're deemed as a disregarded entity, which basically means they're taxing you as an individual, a sole proprietorship. So that's what you're taxed as for the IRS. But if you're not sure, please check your tax professional to ask. Okay. I'm just giving advice. I'm not a tax professional, but if you have questions, contact them to see what you are. Then it's asking you your profit structure. What is your entity's profit structure? Okay. Are you for profit, not for profit or other? Okay. If you make money, you're for profit. If you don't make money or you don't take money, then you're not for profit. Then it's gonna ask you your social economic categories, okay? Are you veteran owned, woman owned, joint venture, um, community development, minority owned business? Click anyone that applies to you, okay? Click save and continue. Now we're gonna put in the bank account information, all right? So the first question that they ask is, do you accept credit cards as a method of payment? You're going to put yes, and I'm going to tell you why. The government will pay you however they want to pay you, and you want to be able to accept whatever payments that they have, okay? You can always get a credit card company later on down the line to accept credit card payments, but you want to accept this as a method. So go ahead and click yes. And then you're going to put in your information, your credit, your um, bank account information. All right. So go ahead and fill that out. When you get to the automatic clearinghouse ACH, put in your information, your phone number. OK. And then when you get to the remittance address, this is basically stating, hey, if something happens with the ACH, where would you like your check to be mailed to? Now, of course, you can put my address. I don't mind taking your money. But I'm pretty sure you want to put your own address. So go ahead and put your name, your address, your city, state, and zip code. Once you put in all that information, click save and continue. And now we move on to the executive compensation questions. This question is asking, in your business or organization's proceeding completed fiscal year, one keyword, you have not completed a fiscal year because you're a brand new business. Did your business or organization, the legal entity to which specify in the SAMS record, receive both of the following, 80% or more of your annual gross revenue or $25 million or more in annual gross revenue? Once again, you're a brand new business. You haven't completed any type of revenue. So that answer is going to be no. Click save and continue. Now it's asking, is your business or organization as represented by the unique entity ID on this entity registration responding to a federal procurement opportunity that contains this provision, 
FAR 52.209, subject to the clause FAR 52.209, in a current federal contract or applying to federal grant opportunities, which contains the award term and condition described? The answer will be no. Why? You're not um, responding to any procurement. You don't have a federal contract and you're not applying to a grant. You are a brand new business trying to register into SAM.gov. Okay, so that answer is going to be no. Then you're going to click save and continue. Everything else is already filled out for you. Now, this part is basically just a summary of everything that we just did. Um, you can go ahead and read through it, make sure everything is good, is good to go. And then we're going to click save and continue. Congratulations, you got through part one of four in registering your entity. Now we're going to talk about the next codes. This page is where you enter the next codes, okay? Remember those little five or six digit numbers that specifies what a solicitation is about or what, what the code of that solicitation is about? Well, that's what a next code is, okay? So in this next code, once again, if you've been learning from me, you know we don't care about stinking NAX codes, okay? We can do any NAX code we want to, but we have to put a NAX code into the system. So I'm going to give you a very generic NAX code that you can use so that you can um, put yourself into the system. And as you start searching for more solicitations, and winning more contracts, you can always update these next codes. So the next code I'm going to give you is, you're going to go to the search for next codes and you're gonna type in 812990. You're gonna click on search. It's gonna pop up all other personal services. You're going to click add. And then you're going to mark as primary. That's it. That's how you add your next code. You don't do anything else. We don't add products or service codes. We don't do any of that. We only add the next code, okay? So once you do that, click save and continue and move on to the next page. Now we're going to talk about the size matrix, okay? It's going to ask you, what are your annual receipts according to 13 CFR? Given that you just started your business, you don't have any annual receipts. You're a brand new business. Now, if you're not a brand new business, definitely take a look at your annual receipts and fill it out accordingly. But the majority of you are probably brand new businesses. So we're, what we're going to put here is the number one because you haven't made any money. We're going to put the number one just so we can fill it out and get through this page okay now next year when you have to re-register and go through the registration process again to um, renew then you can fill this out then it's going to ask you the number of employees that's a simple question if you have multiple employees put the number of employees you have if it's just you you have no employees unless you are considered an employee then you put one if not you're going to put zero the location is optional. We don't do optional questions, okay? So you can go ahead and skip that, click save and continue. It's asking you, do you wish to enter EDI information for your non-government entity? The answer is going to be no, because we don't know what EDI information is. Electronic data interchange information, but more than likely, you don't have that. Now, if you do know what EDI information is and you have that, then you're going to go ahead and click yes and enter it in. Now it's going to ask you about the disaster response information. It says, do you wish to be included in the disaster response registry? Your answer is going to be yes, and I'm going to tell you why. When you are on the disaster response registry, SAM.gov will contact you when there is a disaster related, um, I don't know if it's going to be in your area or whatever, but when there's a disaster, you're put on a list for SAM.gov to call and say, hey, we need a price for XYZ. We ain't got time for bidding. 
give us the price and provide the services. Sad to say, this is where you can make a lot of money, okay? A lot of money. So you definitely want to be on that disaster response registry. <clears throat> then it's going to ask you, does your company require bonding to bid on contracts? More than likely, the answer will be no, because bonding usually is construction companies or anything like that. So the answer probably will be no. But guess what? If the answer is yes, you found out later that the answer was yes, you can always come back and change this. That's the important thing, okay? We just want to get through the registration process. Now it's going to ask you for the geographical area served. Once again, as a federal concierge, we service everything, everyone, everywhere, right? So you're going to click on any state and click save and continue. Now, once again, this is a just review of the information that you just put in. So you can go ahead and review that information. If everything looks good, you're going to click save and continue. Now we get into the FARS. This is the part everybody's like, oh my God, I don't know. I'm so confused. This is so many, blah, 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 blah. So my rule of thumb, once again, is either call Sam.gov to ask them to better explain the question or put no. You can always come back and change it later when you find out the correct answer. So let's go through it. Okay, question number one says, who are the persons within your company responsible for determining prices offered in bid proposals? You must add a person, okay? This person will be you. Okay, make sure to add that person. If you have more than one person, you can put more than one person, but make sure you add at least one. Question number two says, does your company have any other plants, facilities at different addresses routinely used to perform on contracts? I can't answer that question for you. You have to answer that question. More likely, it's going to be no. For products designed by the Environmental Protection Agency and provided by your company, does the percentage of recovered materials content meet the applicable EPA guidelines. If you don't know what any of that means, you can either put vendor will provide information with specific offers to the government, or you can put no. Either one is fine. Question number five. Is your company a small business concern that wishes to be considered for status as a labor surplus concern? Put that yes if you if you want to be considered. Put no if you don't. If you're not sure what a labor plus uh, a labor surplus area is, contact Sam.gov or you can click on this link and read it up yourself. Is your company con um, owned or controlled by a common parent that files its federal income tax returns on a consolidated basis? If it's yes, put yes. If it's no, put no. Number seven, our records indicate there is not an active exclusion for your company or any of your companies or any of its principals currently debarred, suspended, proposed for debarment, or declared ineligible for the award of contracts by any federal agents. More than likely, the answer is going to be no because you've never applied to any companies, right? But if you have and you have been barred by any agency, then you would have to put yes. And I'm pretty sh uh, sure that they're going to ask you what agency. So let's see. No, it doesn't. Okay. Question number eight. In the past three years, has your company or any of its principals been convicted or have a civil, a civil judgment rendered against it for commission of fraud or a criminal offense in connection with obtaining, attempting to obtain or performing a public contract or subcontract violation of federal or state antitrust statuses? Answer the question according to your business, yes or no. 
in the past three years, has your company um, been notified of delinquent federal taxes in the amount of $3,500 for which liability remains unsatisfied? Answer that according to your business, yes or no. Number nine, is Fisher Construction Company and General Construction LLC or any of its principles presently indicated for or otherwise criminally or civilly charged by the government entity which commissioned for any of the offenses enumerated in question eight? Answer the questions to your, according to your business, yes or no. Within the past three years, has your company been terminated for the cause default? Yes or no? More than likely, the answer is going to be no because you're a brand new company. Please list the name of any hub zones, businesses participating in the hub zone joint venture and with your company and general contracting LLC. Okay, with your company. So the answer is going to be none. Select none and move on to question 13. Our records indicate that your company is not participating in a woman-owned small business joint venture. Okay. Those are not questions that you need to answer. Those are just statements. Thus, 15 says, does your company provide any data to the government that qualifies as limited rights data as restricted computer software? More than likely, the answer is going to be no. Or you can put vendor will provide information specific offers to the government. I will put no. Save and continue. Then you're going to continue answering all the questions according to your business. So question number 17 asks, are you a small disadvantaged business? Majority of us are small disadvantaged businesses based on the standard SBA standard size. But if you're not sure, go ahead and put no. Call sam.gov to ask them, but this will be based on your information, okay? So if you are small disadvantaged, click yes. If you're not, click no. 15 says, does Fisher Company, does your company deliver any end products from the corresponding country or origin that are listed in the list of products? The majority of the answer is going to be no because you haven't provided any anything because you haven't bid it on anything. So click no. Number 20, has your company held previous contracts, subcontracts subject to federal acquisitions regulations? So has this company, the one that you're registering, more than likely the answer will be no. 21, are any end products delivered to the government by your company foreign end products? The answer more than likely will be no because... We haven't done any anything. We don't have anything to deliver, okay? Number 22, has your company, has your company filled all the required equal employment opportunity compliance reports? You're going to put no because you haven't filled out any. Or if you have, click yes. Please choose one of the following statements that applies to your company. Fisher Company has developed and has no file affirmative action programs required by Secretary of Labor on regulations. Number 23, please choose one of the following statements that applies to your company. Your company has developed and has on file affirmative action programs required by the Secretary of Labor regulations. Your company does not have developed and does not have on file affirmative action programs required by the Secretary of Labor Regulations, or your company has not had previous contracts subject to written affirmative action programs requirements from Secretary of Labor. That has not had previous contracts is most likely true because you're a new company. You haven't had any contracts. So I would select that one. But if any of the other ones apply to you, go ahead and select that. Remember, we're just trying to get through registration. You can always come back and change the answers. Question number 24. Does your company provide maintenance, calibration, and our repair 
of information technology, scientific and medical and or, medical and or office and business equipment? More than likely, the answer is going to be no. Okay. Once you finish that, click save and continue and move on to the next page. Does your company provide services as described in these FARs? Take a look at them, read them, and then decide. Depending on your answer, these may unhighlight, but if your answer is no, you're going to move on to question number 27. Is your company an inverted domestic corporation? Answer that according to what your company is. Number 28, is your company a subsidiary of an inverted domestic corporation? Answer that based on your company. Move on to question number 33. Does your entity have an unpaid federal tax liability that has been assessed for which all judicial and administrative remedies have been exhausted or have lapsed? Answer that according to your company, whatever that may be. Has your entity ever been convicted of a felony criminal violation under the federal law within the last 24 months? Answer that according to your company and put the answer below. Did your company receive $7.5 million or more in federal contracts during the previous federal fiscal year, requiring it to be publicly disclosed greenhouse gas emissions and reduce goals to receive less than $7.5 million in federal contracts during the previous federal fiscal year, but still wants to publicly disclose greenhouse gas emissions reduction goals? More than likely, the answer is going to be no, because I seriously doubt you've won any contracts. Okay, once you answer that, move on to question number 33. It says, does your company provide covered telecommunications equipment or services as part of, of its offered products and services to the government in the performance of the contract, subcontract, or contractual instrument? That answer is going to be no. And then the part, the second part of the answer is, does your company use covered telecommunications equipment or services or any other equipment systems or services that uses telecommunication equipment or services? The answer is going to be no. Click save and continue. Now it says, our records indicate that your company, um, your company have not selected those NAX codes as part of the information and it's not applicable. You don't have to do anything for this question. Just click save and continue. Okay. Then you're going to finish answering the questions according to your business. Does your company wish to bid on, or bid on or currently hold any DOD or DOD funded contracts? You're going to click no and save and continue. If you click yes, these 36 and 37 and maybe 38 will open up and you will have to answer according to those questions, okay? Now you're just getting to the FARS page, which is a summary of all the FARS that we just went through. You can take your time, read these if you have any questions. Um, at the bottom, make sure you click, I have read each FAR. And all the provisions by submitting the certification, I am assessing to the accuracy and representation and certifications contained herein. Going to click that, click save and continue. Okay. Now it's asking you, does your company wish to apply to federal financial assistance projects or programs? Or is your company currently the recipient or funding under any federal financial assistance? The answer will be no. We're not applying to financial assistance. We are bidding on con we are bidding on solicitations. Okay, so click no, save and continue. Then you're going to put in your point of contact information. Okay, this is going to be your name. Now, if you have individual people for this, then you're going to go ahead and put that information in there. If not, and it's just you, you're going to copy the information from the first one and put it in the second one, okay? Then you're going to put in one phone number, okay? Make sure you put in the correct number. 
then you're just going to copy. If it's the same information here, you're just going to copy that into this. Okay. And then you're going to do the same thing for the electronic business point of contact. Now, once again, guys, we don't do optional things. If it's optional, we're not going to worry about it. All right. Make sure the email address is in there perfectly good. E um, your addresses, your information, if everything is good, go ahead and click save and continue. All right, now you come to the SBA profile. You can take your time, read this. It's just giving you some information on the SBA. Take your time, read it. Once you finish reading it, save and continue. And guys, once again, we are down to the entity review um, summary page where it'll show you all your information um, that you need, that you input it in for the entire registration. You're going to go through and make sure everything is right. Then you're going to sub click submit. Okay. Now, before you click submit, I believe they will ask you for another password. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. But before you click submit, I want to just talk to you guys just to know, congratulations, you have made it through the entire process to registering your company at Sam.gov. Every move that you make from here on out will propel you into the career, financial freedom, time freedom that you want it to be. Okay. So hit the submit button. I believe they will send you a password. Go ahead and get the password and then you are good to go in registering your SAM.gov registration. So let's go see. Okay, send password, confirm, and congratulations, guys. You did it. You registered your business on Sam.gov. Now, the next thing you need to do is wait for your registration to get active. But guess what? You should still be looking for solicitations, okay? You should still be looking for solicitations. You should still be starting to work them and everything. You are good to go. Congratulations on becoming registered in SAM.gov. Now, guys, if you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel and my TikTok channel if you haven't already. Once again, guys, I'm so proud of you. Congratulations, much success, and remember, this year's mantra, no excuses. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.